What's up, guys? Welcome to tonight's episode of Motorsport at Our Podcast. On the other side, we have a very interesting guest, as always. And today, it is Mr. Stuart Leonard. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so first of all, it's a big honor to have you on uh, our podcast. And uh, it's going to be interesting to hear a few things regarding you and, uh, of course, what you do. As you may know, we are interviewing interesting uh, race car drivers and profiles around the world. And uh, for sure, you're one of them. So uh, let's get right into it. So um, you're, of course, as you said, a racing driver. And uh, can you tell me and the listeners a few things about yourself and their series you're in? Um, so, uh, I started uh, racing cars five years ago when I was 20, I'm 25 at the moment. Um, uh, currently, I race uh, an Audi R8 GT3 car uh, with uh, WRT, uh, one of the Audi factory teams. Um, and I'm currently competing in the Blancpain Endurance and Sprint Championship this year, which just finished last weekend, actually, yeah. last morning. Yeah. I yeah. you, you had your, um, the last race, was it the 2nd of October the last race was or something? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was, yeah, it was first weekend of October, so yeah. Yeah, cool. And, and uh, that's, of course, a very interesting series, as uh, maybe the listeners and viewers doesn't know. We've been talking a little bit uh, before this interview, but uh, and that, of course, is it, interesting due to the fact that a lot of people might not really know about this uh, sort of racing series, but there's a very huge variety of, of teams and uh, racing cars. So why why the Blancpain and how did you really end up in that series from the first place? Um, I think the Blancpain has always been known in the sports car world for being probably one of the most, if not the most competitive uh, series. Um, it's um, there's quite a lot of manufacturers. I mean, you have Bentley, Audi, Mercedes, BMW, uh, Nissan, McLaren, Aston Martin, and a uh, Porsche and Ferrari. Um, so you have a lot of manufacturers. You have um, a lot of high caliber drivers coming from all sorts of backgrounds, like DTM, F1. Um, all the way down to sort of like the uh, amateur gentleman driver. Um, and, you know, it's, um, it's um, you have a lot of sort of factory efforts um, from pretty much most of the manufacturers other than I think Ferrari and Porsche um, off the top of my head and Aston Martin. Um, but all, all the others have, you know, it's, it's a very competitive grid. They're big grids. Endurance, I think, is typically you know, between 50 to 60 cars. And Sprint this year has been uh, 30 to 38 cars, something like that. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's been incredibly competitive. I think uh, Hungara you know, top 20 in qualifying was um, 0.7 seconds, which is obviously very close. And it means, you know, every, every tenth counts. Um, so from my point of view, it's um, it's a challenge, uh, which I enjoy very much. Um, plus, as well, I, I love the cars, I love the driving. Um, you know, you've got some very big names out there, and it's always good to be able to compare yourself to the best. Yeah, well, and you really are, as you said, you know, F1 drivers, and uh, I have to be a little bit of a supporter of our Swede, uh, Felix Rosenquist, which is, uh, as the, the Swedes might know, uh, race a uh, Mercedes, uh, and I don't know, have you ever been able to sort of go door-to-door -door against him uh, at any point? Um, I don't think I've come, at least not knowing, because it's always a bit difficult to know when you're in the car, who's in the other cars, because the cars are shared between two to three drivers, depending if it's sprint or endurance. Um, but I know for sure he's done very well this year. He's had a couple of poles. He's particularly in sprint, and he's shown some very good uh, very good pace. Um, and, yeah, for sure he's had a strong year. Also, I think it's his first year in DTM as well. And I think he had a good performance with Mercedes there. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, he's clearly one of the strong ones. Yeah. As well as you, you need to have sort of lift yourself as well. <laughs> no, but it's great to hear because uh, uh, you know, and what I meant in the beginning there, of course, is uh, Blancpain is of course a, a great series, but it's sort of 
with all the great series out there, if you know, if you're a Porsche, Porsche sort of Super Cup or if it's something like that, there's so many series out there. But it's great to see when you look, watch the live feeds how, as you said, the tight the fields are. And, and how can you sort of explain how exciting that is as, as a race car driver when you have that uh, sort of very tense uh, competition between the drivers? Yeah, I mean, as you say, it is very intense. I mean, particularly at the start, particularly in the first sort of 30 minutes to an hour, um, it is incredibly intense. It's like literally, you know, really you've got your shoulders out, you're trying to keep track position, move forward. Um, it is, you know, very feisty uh, racing. Um, and, you know, with the kind of drivers that are out there, you know, Everyone is is trying to be at the top, and uh, the you know it's because once the sort of field starts to separate out, it's very hard to close uh, close the gap on someone else. Because once the field gets going, um, you know if you if you look at race pace, it's um, it's quite similar between all the manufacturers. Uh, the BOP is managed, I think, quite well. Um, especially especially when you start looking at results for the championships this year. So, for example, in uh, endurance, McLaren won, um, Sprint, Audi won, and Mercedes won the overall. So there's it's, it's really competitive, so it really comes down to, um, of course, you need good drivers um, who, who are able to be on the race pace, but you also need an extremely good team who are able to work uh, with you in terms of strategy, um, good pit crew, um, which is very important as pit stops are. Um, there's, you know, rules about how many people you can have doing a pit stop. Um, so, you know, pit stops aren't as quick as, say, like a DTM or an F1 pit stop. But um, in terms of the guys on the wheels, there's definitely an art to doing a quick pit stop. And that is definitely um, a point which, you know, um, you need um, in order to be competitive. Um, so it's really a, a sort of a team uh, sport, um, and and yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, you, it's a good explanation, and it's very nice to hear because I feel personally that it's a series that I want to know more about and sort of spend more time watching. But you see, that comes new series all the time, like TCR, which is also a very competitive series out there, and and it's good to see all these. All alternatives to the, maybe the big series like NASCAR or V8 Supercar or Formula One that you have other series, but it's equal as, as competitive. Uh, and that sort of brings up the question that I would like to know: How how is the format? You talked about sprint, you talked about endurance, but maybe for the people that don't really know what sprint and endurance specifically means, sort of, can you put a finger on? on what that is and what that means. Sure, so you have um, five rounds in sprint, five rounds in endurance, so a total of 10. Uh, sprint is an hour long race, two drivers, thir- basically thir- 30 minutes each. I mean, there's a, I think there's a 10 minute window, so it varies between 25 and 30 minutes of exactly where and how the strategy is to the engineers is sort of left to them. But that's the sort of outset, so you have, um, in terms of qualifying for sprint, you have Q1, 2, and 3. Uh, so in Q, so Q1 and 2, um, so out of the two drivers, um, one driver needs to do Q1, one driver needs to do Q2. And out of the overall time of that, you have to be within um, either second of pole, or I think it's the top 19, if you like to make it into Q3, to have the final shootout. Um, In terms of endurance, the races can vary between three hours to 24 hours. So you have the 24 hours of Spa. Um, And then this year we had three hours at Silverstone, three hours at Monza, six hours at Ricard, Paul Ricard, and three hours at Nürburgring. Um, And here, again, everyone needs to qualify the car, but it's the fastest time of, and it's through, sorry, to, it's three drivers in endurance. So whoever's the quickest time out of the three drivers in qualifying, basically that time is taken um, to set the order. Um, and I would say there's a lot more strategy involved with um, endurance, but say things like pit stops matter more in sprint. Um, and those are probably the fundamental differences. All right. 
Right. It's very interesting, and 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 I'm gonna tell you why because you also see a series like V8 Supercar that also has a endurance part of their of their season, and therefore it's very interesting because when you have this endurance, you have as you say, two or more drivers that are very different driving styles, etc. etc. And you can see the differences in the way they operate the car, the way they drive the car. And, and of course, it's great excitement, you know. And um, this is a question that I also have had on my mind for quite some time. And that is, how do you set up a car uh, for, for, a, for a long race, like an endurance race, when you have more than one driver with different preferences and different things that they want from the car. How big of a challenge would you say that that is? Um, actually, quite. I mean, to be honest, this year, um, WRT have run um, five cars in endurance and six cars in sprint. So there's been a lot of data available between different cars, different drivers, um, and it's been, you know, it's been one of the big learning factors for me this year is getting to understand how, you know, people, people's preferences and how to set the car up. The, I mean, the important thing is, um, on, um, particularly for endurance, this car needs to be comfortable to drive. Um, it needs to be, it needs to be manageable over a 24-hour period. So when you're at four in the morning, utterly shattered, that you can still put in the times. Okay, it might not have the last couple of tenths in terms of speed, but it needs to be manageable. And then you would look at, you know, depending on who's your in your car and who's your in who's who are your teammates, perhaps who's the most experienced, the most adaptable, um, and then who's the least experienced and least adaptable, and and try and find a happy medium, making sure that you know the driver times are able to be as close as they can to one another. So there's no points, like, if you have one guy who has a lot of experience um, uh, and is very adaptable, there's no point setting up the car directly for him. If you've got an inexperienced guy who can maybe only drive it in a certain way and is, you know, is still sort of learning. Um, so the, the more experienced person will need to, um, uses adaptability, if you like, to uh, cater to the less experienced driver. Um, and there's, I mean, there's compromise in that for sure. Um, but typically how it's worked in uh, the car this year with us, you know, if uh, you sort of have a, a dedicated guy for qualifying, um, so whoever you pick for qualifying, so my car this year has generally been for endurance Robin friends. So we will set the car, uh, make sure he's happy with the car um, for qualifying, and then we'll find sort of a more happy medium across three drivers for the sort of race uh, race stints. Because um, that's, to be honest, it's fundamental. Um, if you have a car that's, you know, not comfortable to drive, it's very easy to have a shunt. Mm, for sure, and that's something that you... With, of course, the chance of that, you know, you want to minimize that as much as you can, which is, of course, understandable. Um, something that I would like to sort of move on into is, of course, uh, what you could tell us about your, a little bit about your early life and, and the background and how your career sort of began and how it subsequently progressed. Yeah. Um, well, I started in motorsport a bit late. I didn't really go through the whole karting uh way as, as most people do. Um, I started at 20 years old, uh, so only five years ago. Um, currently, yeah, 25 now. Um, I was at university when I sort of had um, my sort of first chance. I, I didn't have the money when I was uh, younger to be able to uh, d do things like karting and, and things as much as I actually wanted to. But as soon as I had the opportunity, I sort of jumped at it and at first it was very much um, club motorsport. I was in a cage room um, and it was it was learning for me and I had my I was doing my degree on the side. Uh, well I say more I think at the time motorsport was on the side and my degree was my main focus. Um, I didn't really expect it to go as far as it has to this day. 
um, at that point in time. Um, and then in my first year with guys who had already been racing, you know, for they had like minimum three years race experience, something like that, I was already uh, winning races. And then in my second year, um, I moved to sort of, this is in the UK, by the way, and, yeah, explain that. Uh, I moved to the sort of top of the Caterham calendar uh, sort of series. And then I, in the, yeah, I, I was leading the championship up until the second to last round where I had some mechanical failures and some trouble and um, ended up finishing second on points in the championship. Um, but then also in my second year, um, I started GTs where I started at the, I started doing VLNs at the Neuschleife. Um, and simply I, I did that because I just had a fascination for the place. You know, it's a very unique circuit. It's, um, and I, to be honest, I had just had loads of fun there. Um, and I did that in a, my first race was in the Genesta GT4, which it poured down with rain and was probably one of the most stressful experiences of my life. Um, and so I'll never forget the first lap I went out, you had a 911 RSR car and full flames on the side of the circuit, like a bonfire with just a little yellow flag and it was still full speed ahead. Um, and uh, that was sort of an eye-opening experience, really. And then also that year, in uh, 2013, this was, I drove the SLS GT3 with Fortec. Um, unfortunately, it was our first time at the Neuschleife and it was uh, a bit of a struggle. Um, we were a bit lost on the setup and things. and But I, I sort of got the bug and I wanted to move forward. Um, still at this time, I had, was finishing university and then... Uh, started working for an oil company, um, an oil trading company, Trafigura. Um, and then I started with ProDrive um, in 2014, um, basically to do the, it was meant to initially be to do the VLN series, the full 10 rounds, not including the, tw uh, not including the 24. Mm -hmm. But I was juggling that and working in Switzerland at the time. Um, so literally on a Friday night after work at six o'clock, I would get out, drive five hours to Nürburgring, uh, qualify on the Saturday, race on the Sunday for four hours, and then 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 come back. Um, and uh, that was, um, but then due to political reasons there, we decided to uh, switch to Blancpain, um, where, to be honest, we struggled. Uh, we had a lot of teething problems um, with the team and with the car. Um, and then for 2015, made some changes and decided to step away from the VLN altogether and go to Blancpain. Um, then I was in a Pro-Am car with Paul Wilson and Michael Meadows. Um, and I think we did um, pretty well in terms of driver performance. And the team were a lot sharper, a lot better. And But unfortunately, we still had some teething problems with the car um, with certain components just failures um because i think we could have won the pro-am championship in that in that year but we still had some good results um you know we won the endurance silverstone round we came third overall in british gt at spa um and won the silver cup there um and that was a one-off round um and we had some really good uh, driving performances but due to the teething problems of the car, I made the decision to switch to Audi and WRT, um, to which um, started off very well. Uh, we I won Sepang, the overall um, 12 hours of Sepang in 2015, and then the 24 hours of Dubai in 2016, and then um, and then went to uh, uh, Blancpain, and unfortunately this year has been a little bit up and down. I think. Um, we've had a lot of potential, but for various reasons, haven't been able to put it together, uh, which has been a little bit disappointing. But um, I hope in 2017 we can resolve the issues that we had this year. Wow. What a story, man. Wow. You've been through a lot in, in quite... Uh, yeah. <laughs> throughout your career. And, uh, you know, I'm 22 today, so that's pretty interesting because, you know, most of the of the racing drivers around the world they start their careers, of course, fairly early, and and I think in the racing world even 15 years old is considered as quite late. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, for me, it's just so intriguing because I almost wanted to start go karting because everybody loves racing, huh? So uh, it's quite interesting to hear the, the, the journey you've taken to where you are today. So uh, first of all, I have to say congratulations. I think well done. And you. Uh, you deserve it. It sounds like you've been a huge. You're being a huge asset to your team, and uh, that you're living the dream. So uh, you can always uh, give a huge applause to that. <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, let's have some fun, shall we? And that means, of course, this is going to be the most important thing in your life ever. And it's of course Motorsport in our podcast. Seven fast questions. So <laughs> not so good at this. Okay. All right. Oh, no, well, I'm dreading this. Can I quickly get Google up or something? Okay. <laughs> uh, mm, ah, can't do that. <laughs> well, dirty air or oversteer? Uh, oversteer. Downforce or non-downforce? Can I take a bit of downforce? <laughs> 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 That's a good one, though. But you're a sneaky man. This is with the, for all you guys that want to do similar things with me when it comes to sort of interviews. Always keep an eye on these racing drivers because they know how to wiggle the way out of things. Um, well, I guess so. I'm nice, even though it's almost it almost the weekend, so you can get that one. This one is very important. Nico or Lewis? Lewis. Uh, Lord of the Rings, The Matrix. Jurassic World or The Force Awakens? Oh. Ah, <laughs> uh, The Matrix. Oh, there we go. Good taste. I think that you almost deserves an extra point. That's a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, which one of these legends that I will now name has made the biggest impact on you and your career, and you shall choose two. Here is your alternatives. Aiton Senna, Jamie Winkup, NASCAR driver Jimmy Johnson, Sebastian Loeb, or Tom Christensen. You can choose two, and also give two reasons why. Um, four. Oh. Um, well, I think I'll probably pick Senna and Loeb. Um, you know, I think Senna is a hero to many people in motorsports and um, for sure is one of the most respected drivers ever, I think. Um, and Loeb, um, I think he's an incredible uh, talent and the things he's achieved in, um, in, in rallying is, is really incredible. Um, and um, I don't think, yeah, I think it's, you can't really replicate that. Um, yeah, I think they're two very unique names and faces uh, to motorsport. Yeah, yeah. and I, I totally agree. Um... And uh, we're not finished, of course. Uh, name three talents that you're really good at doing. Name three reasons behind them as well. Uh, talents that I was really good at doing. God, I don't have many. <laughs> oh, man, that all says, come on, man. This is your time uh, to time. <laughs> uh, well, I, I guess driving. I guess that's one. I guess I've come up quickly in a very short period of time, so I've got to have some kind of talent there. Um, what else? Uh, talent. Um, don't really know, to be honest. It's really difficult. Um, not really thought about it. Um, can I just pick driving, driving, driving? <laughs> <laughs> well... I guess this time it's okay, but uh, and for sure I agree with you. It seems like you've been been doing very well in your driving. So I give today I have a I have a very good day today, by the way. So I'm gonna give you that one, and uh, let's just reverse it. Name three non talents of yours. That is three things that you can admit that you are not so good at. Three things that I can admit that I'm not so good at. Uh. 
I get told I don't listen. That's number one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, what else am I not so good at? I don't know. Uh, I'm not, I don't like cycling. That's one thing with motorsport. I swear a lot of people cycle. I don't like cycling. <laughs> um, three. What am I not good at? Uh, uh, God, I can't think of the third. Sorry. I'll give you two. There's two. <laughs> two. Well, let's face it. Two is more than one, so that's pretty good. Um well, I have to say, well done. It's pretty impressive. You did, you did, you did a good job, though. So you should, you should sort of give yourself one of these for sure. <laughs> um, and um, as we, t- as, as we touched on earlier in the interview, you, um, you said that your season, the season and the calendar itself is is over um, for the 2016 season. Uh, so what uh, do you do now during the off season and what plans do you have for yourself and for your career now looking forwards? Um, for me, I mean, for sure, uh, I want to be back in Blancpain doing both endurance and sprint next year. Um, I still think um, I have areas to improve and I still have a goal of the fact that I want the championship um, that I've been working on for quite a few years now and still trying um uh, in terms of myself um i will keep training um and trying to basically focus on different ways to to in better my performance in the car all right and that's it that sounds very interesting and uh from us at motorsport podcast first of all it's been an honor to have you here as i said earlier but i will mention it once more and um, I can just hope that you're uh, going to get that championship, brother. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you very me. much. And uh, please uh, listen, share, and like this interview. And this guy right here has done a great job, hasn't he? See you next time. See ya.